The Batman is the most well shot film of the year. Actually, it's the second most well shot film of the year. The first one being, of course, my second feature length film, The Hollywood Dream, which comes out exclusively on this YouTube channel for free, no ads, so subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Anyway, Back to the video. The Batman is the highly anticipated film from Matt Reeves starring Robert Pattinson as Batman. I'd say it lived up to the hype. It is one of the best Batman films as well as one of the best films of 2022. From its story to its acting and to its cinematography. The cinematography in The Batman is something that I want to talk about in this video just because it does something that most people should appreciate a little bit more. Especially if you're making movies. You want to take notes on how they portray the story through its cinematography. First of all, I'm going to be talking about spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, don't watch this video. So sit back, get some popcorn, and enjoy the show. This is not a show. What am I talking about? Let's just get into it. The low-key lighting and the uses of shadow. The Batman is a dark film, and I'm not talking about like the themes and story of the Batman. I'm talking about visually, it is a dark film. There was a lot of shadows in there. There is not that three-point lighting that people in film school talk about. There is not that Marvel-looking cinematography either. It is not that TV show cinematography. They implemented low-key lighting. And if you don't know what that is, it's pretty much what it says it is. It's, it's low lights lighting up the scene. You see a lot of shadows. You see a lot of contrast. Much of the Batman takes place at night and low-lit scenes. And you would think that that is not a good thing because you can't see anything, but it is actually what makes the Batman look visually pleasing because there's a lot of contrast in there. There's nothing boring about the shots. A lot of scenes you can see like the camera is closer to the shadow of the face of the actors. So usually what they do is they have the lighting on the opposite side of the line. You know, you don't know about the line I'm talking about, right? The symmetrical line or whatever the hell they call it. The lighting is on the opposite side of that and the camera is on the side where the shadow, you see the shadow, most of it. They do that so they can add more contrast to the scene to make the scenes, once again, not look boring. They didn't just do that for the sake of it. They implemented that into the story of the Batman. So in one of the scenes, it happens in the beginning where there's a group of guys that beat up this one dude and they see the bat signal in the sky and they all hear noises and they're like, yo, let's just chill for a bit. Then they look into like the dark alleyway and slowly Batman walks into the light. It's just a great way of revealing Batman because it's it plays with the shadow. Another scene that they do this in is in the scene before the car chase between Batman and the Penguin where Penguin looks into the same way, the alleyway, and it slowly reveals the Batmobile. And they do it in such a way that looks pretty impactful, especially considering the fact that it's low-key lighting setup that they use throughout the film and that a lot of the scene, a lot of the locations is casted in shadow. So the viewers can't really see what's going on behind, you know, besides the actors and the main focus. Like if you look in the background, you really can't see anything because it's dark and they implemented that into the story. So even the characters can't really see what's in the shadow. And that makes it impactful for when, you know, Batman reveals himself or when the Batmobile is revealed. Like, it's something that most films don't really do that much. And I mean, since we're already talking about the Penguin and Batman, let's talk about that car chase. The car chase is really, really cool how they shot this. Someone on Twitter pointed this out. I can't take full credit for discovering this or whatever, but like, basically what it is is that in a typical car chase scene in a movie, it would be shot kind of a standard way. Like, the camera is like the third person, you know what I mean? Like, the camera is pointing out one car on the side or whatever, and then points to the other car. You know, kind of a generic way of uh, shooting a car chase scene. But in the Batman, what they do is, for most of that sequence, the shots of the penguin is shot in a way that like, you see the front of the penguin's face and on the side you see Batman like driving up, right? And then from Batman's perspective, when the camera is cuts to Batman, you don't really see his face, you just see what he's seeing looking at the penguin. In the Batman scenes, almost as if you are there with him. And then in the penguin scenes, almost as if you're looking back at the Batman the same way the penguin is. It's a pretty clever way of story blocking that scene because once again, it puts you in the world and into the action in a more effective way. Also another thing, the color temperatures that they use in the movie, 
Most of this movie is shot with a warm color temperature instead of a blue color temperature. Not blue, but like, you know, like white bluish, you know what I mean? Like that color temperature is not shot in that, which you would think it would be because most of the stuff takes place at night. But that's not the case. It's a warm color temperature. Usually, like, warm color temperatures in scenes usually represent, like, warmth and comfort and all that. While, like, white slash blue tint color temperature signifies, uh, like, coldness and, like, unease type of atmosphere, not vibe. But in this movie, throughout most of it, it is a warm color temperature. I'm gonna guess it's because, like, Batman is more comfortable being- or Bruce Wayne is more himself as Batman and is more comfortable as being Batman. So I'm guessing that's what it is because the scenes where Bruce Wayne isn't Batman, those scenes are usually lit in a more bluish white color temperature and not the warm color temperature. So I'm uh, guessing that's what it is. I could be wrong, but that's just my theory. So yeah, anyway, the cinematography in the Batman should definitely be something that people don't overlook. You gotta take notes of how they shot that movie because it plays a crucial part into making that movie a step above average or good. It's a step above great. It's amazing. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, click the like button down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Batman.